Hello everybody, I am Jimmy Fantastic and this is my ogre guide. Now the first thing I've got to say about ogres is, if you need a guide, you probably shouldn't be playing them. Because in my opinion, they are the worst team in the game, bar none. They are awful. Um, goblins and halflings have like redeeming factors. The redeeming factor of, of ogres is they just have more unreliable, expensive players. And it's... Uh, you know, in Champions Ladder and Open Ladder, you'll get some concessions by just causing people getting lucky, I guess. But they're really, they're so, so incredibly bad. It's unbelievable. Um, so Cyanide says, strength six ogres on the field. I mean, six ogres on the field isn't that much of a strength. Six strength five players with Mighty Blow on the field is good. But having Bonehead is just, oh, it's horrible. It's horrible having six Boneheads. Um, Nobblers can dodge through any gap. Yeah, they can. They've got Stunty and Titchy, so they ignore tackle zones and they get a plus one to dodges, so they dodge through on two plus anywhere. And you know, obviously, they, and they've got dodge, so they are very, very good at dodging around, but when they get there, they're strength one, so <laughs> they don't really do that much. Um, teammate, teammate throw Fiesta. Now, I'm probably not, I mean. I very very rarely throw them. If you if you want to have fun, fair enough. But uh, you know, if you want to win with ogres, <laughs> um, I think it's it's wise to not throw too much. Weakness is a lot of boneheads. That's the killer. That's the killer on them. You always have a, a turn, or maybe several turns where you fail like four out of five boneheads or whatever. And often it's good to just not activate the ogres because you'll think. You know, you got to weigh up the chances of bone. How bad is it if you bonehead compared to the rewards of blocking? And like, I don't know. There's nothing more fragile than an Oblar. That's very true. They are the absolute worst players in the game. And few tackle zones. I mean, in part, that's the lot of boneheads because obviously you can you're liable to lose tackle zones. The ogres are liable to lose tackle zones, but also the Noblars, though they have tackle zones, they don't exert. The minus one modifier for dodging, so people can run through, you know, noblar screens pretty easily, especially elves. I mean, you just get killed by elves. You've got, you've basically got no chance of being an elf team because they go wherever they want to, and you know, you've got no block or tackle to take them down. It's just horrible. Literally zero chance against combatant opponents with elves. Well, maybe you win the toss and kill them all, and they concede. Anyway, right, let's make a let's make a team to see the players. So they do only have two player types, um, Ogres and Nobblers. Let's start with the Ogres, seeing as it's meant to be an Ogre team. They are only 0 to 6. They are 140k, which is expensive, more expensive than a human Ogre, seeing as uh, Cyanide made them cheaper for some reason. 5529 is a great stat line. Mighty Blow, Thick Skull and Throw Teammate are all really good, but Bonehead is just the killer every time you make an action on a 1. They lose their tackle zones. From the description of Ogres, actually, some new players might think that they're, they're like trolls and they need a Noblar next to them, but they don't. It's just, it is, as as uh, as Negatrades go, it's not that bad, but it, it is bad when you've got six of them. Um, they only have strength on normals, so you're talking, I like one guard early to, to stand in the middle of the, uh, like, you know, three on the three Ogres on the LOS, and you have a guard guy in the middle, makes it very hard to crack the LOS. For a lot of teams, anyway. I like one one or two break tackles. I like two break tackles on the team, pretty much, all the time. So you can move around a little bit. Um, and and then just stand firm, I think, is, is the first choice on most ogres. Apart from those. Um, just because people are quite happy to minus two dice here, you know. To, to try and push you. Or if they've got block, it's not even that bad. They're not that scared of uh, hitting you, unfortunately. So stand firm keeps you, keeps you in places. So... So, I mean, and then obviously piling on is good because you do want to get rowdy sometimes. Um, doubles obviously block, no questions asked. Um, the second one, you could go tackle because, you know, you sorely lack tackle on the team. You could go dodge as well. Dodge is fine, especially with break tackle. Um, and then 
but I mean, I think those are the only two, only three doubles I wouldn't take pro, especially as you don't have loner. That is the upgrade that they get from humans. They don't have loner because it is ostensibly an ogre team. Um, I wouldn't take movement really. I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take agility or armor either. To be honest, I, the agility is a funny, the funny. It's a funny old thing because he becomes a project player then. He could be, he could take a skill that affects the team. You know, like a guard or a stand firm or a break tackle, or he gets an agility to make him a slightly more reliable ball carrier. But the thing is, I don't even like taking agility on a bull centaur that much, because you want you're gonna break tackle anyway on it. You know, so I like, I don't know. I really don't like the agility. You're not getting the benefit of dodging from it. You're only getting the pickup from it. Really, um, strength I would pass up for a block or a dodge or a tackle. I mean, th those are the three, the three things you're really missing tackle. You obviously need block to make your two dice blocks reliable. Um, you want to, A lot of people like to spam guard to try and get a set of three dice as easier. The thing is, with this bonehead, you lose more if you lose a guard. So, I, I'm I would rather have stand firm and then they're still, you know, plant them somewhere. Your opponent's got to deal with them. Um, so yeah, there's the ogres. Only not a six though, which makes it actually more of a more of a snotling team or uh, nobilas as they are in cyanide, runs as they are in blood ball twenty sixteen. So, you know, you can forgive people for calling them snotlings and stuff. Um, they are agility only. They are the cheapest player in the game, but I mean they are the worst. Twenty k, five one three five only agility. They've already got the sidestep, which is pretty much what you take first on any agility only player normally. Dodge. Obviously, right stuff that can get thrown. Stunty, so they ignore the things, get hurt easier. And, uh, yeah, Titchy adds one. So, I mean, and and they, they don't exert the minus one modifier. So, they do dodge around, they dodge through tackle zones very well. But they're so slow that they don't really get anywhere. <laughs> and uh, the Titchy is, is actually quite a bad quite a bad skill when you can't really cage with them. You still can kind of screen two squares between with them. Um, but yeah, and as for skill ups, I mean, you almost want to sack them if they skill up. Double, I would go a uh, dirty player for a fouler, probably. Leader is not a bad shout. I've had a leader goblin before on Fumble. It's it's pretty good because your rerolls cost so much, your team value is so high. Um, maybe block if you really want a ball carry. I mean, what what I tend to go is sprint and sure well sure feed first then sprint so then at least you've got a bit of movement you know he's pseudo movement eight because the movement five is the killer for the ball carriers um, and you know I do like having a snotling ball carrier to be honest uh, you can see anyway it, it's situational I will be uploading my ogre games I am uh, I am trying to qualify with champions ladder with ogres this season so I shall link the playlist uh, you know in the description. Um, and I, I think it's certainly worthwhile to just have one developed sprint show sure feet. Then he's a prime, uh, a prime player to get thrown by an ogre. Um, so yeah, I, I would take movement as well to just movement is the thing they like the most. I would take straight. I would honestly, I would beef up. Uh, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind beefing up a nobler. I guess you wouldn't. I guess if you if if you'd already got sprint show sure feet. And then movement, then the strength would be kind of acceptable in a way, but uh, you know you probably wouldn't take it. And you, and diving tackle kind of gives them tackle zones, so like I would want one as a ball carrier and the rest just diving tackle first skill or sacked. So the problem, the problem that you get with ogres is that they're just literally the best when they're at a thousand TV, and then uh, they just go down after that. So you don't really want too many skills on them. And you don't really want the extra rerolls. So when it comes to your starting roster, there's only one roster that I consider, which is all six ogres, and then eight noblars, zero rerolls. Now there's an argument for dropping one of those ogres and getting two rerolls because then you've got all the rerolls you'll ever need probably, and you've only got to save 140k to get the ogre. But the thing is, because the because they are the best at a thousand TV. And because they're so like you know everything costs so much TV in the team, I like just sticking with one reroll, maybe with a leader as well, maybe with a snotling leader, and one normal reroll. Their their record really suffers when they go up TV, and unfortunately, if you're winning, obviously fan factor goes up, 
and then once your fan factor goes up a lot and you've got skills on everyone it just you know it's just horrible because you get killed by elves with dodge and you get killed by bash teams with claw basically claw mighty blow or claw palm just ruin your ogres and it's just anyone with block is a danger to the severe danger to the noblars. If people have block and tackle, it's horrific. If they have block tackle, mighty blow, it's you're done. But you know, as uh, as far as basic gameplay with them goes, you've just got to be really safe. Safe moves first all the time. Think about what's going to happen if the first one you activate, oh, um, boneheads. Think about the order of activations. What if this guy? You know, sometimes it's better to take a less optimal block first because the risk of the bonehead will be mitigated and stuff like this. So you really got to think about if people are bonehead. Um, obviously try to stick ogres on their threats, like if they've got a block tackle mighty blow guy, try to stick an ogre on him so that you can't just freely hit a snot snotling every turn. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously if, if your opponent scores on turn 8, you should try the goblin toss, well snotling toss. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's that's the that's the ogre guide. Good luck if you want to use them. Basically, um, yeah, they're really, 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 really bad. But you know, I, w I would advise new players to stay away from them. But if you really want to play them, you know, thanks for watching this video. Check out the playlist. Um, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.